from the director of Exorcist Believer, David Gordon Green, comes his new foray into film called Nutcrackers. It's a Ben Stiller joint. And normally, Ben Stiller joint would be good for me. I like Ben Stiller. I love a lot of his old films. But it's also a streamer exclusive on Hulu. Ben Stiller, Hulu streaming exclusive, kind of uh, canceling each other out. And in fact, the, the Hulu power is overpowering Ben Stiller. And what we're left with is a pretty miserable time. Let's talk about Nutcrackers, the third crappy movie I watched in a row. It's beginning to look a lot like I hate myself. And I keep watching these streaming movies. I, I just, I beg to the streamer gods to put even a small amount of effort in. Now, to Nutcracker's credit, we do have a, a real director directing in this. I mean, David Gordon Green, he made, he made a Halloween trilogy and some people like some of them. I myself don't really have a problem with any of them. I know I'm in the minority. I know Halloween kills, uh, not very well received and Halloween ends, definitely not well received. But for me, at least there was competency in the directing. Now we're on Nutcrackers, uh, a film with a script so jarringly lame. I don't understand why Sir David thought it necessary to make this film at all, but apparently it was inspired by his trip out to a friend's place where he saw this loving family that had homeschooled kids kind of unconventionally bucking the trends and social norms and just living their best life. And so he thought, I want to make a movie about this starring Ben Stiller. I want to kill off the two parents and I want to put him in a precarious situation where he has to try to look after these little shits for a weekend. How fun. And of course, Stiller's character has a deadline. His name is Michael. He's got a deadline. He's got to get back for a big, important conference, a presentation. Before I talk about this certainly not important movie, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe, the like, and maybe leaving a comment along your merry way, I would appreciate it. The film's called Nutcrackers. Put a spoiler tag right on this because I'm, I'm probably going to ruin some stuff for you. There is no nutcracking at all. And there's certainly no nutcracker. At least not until the final 15, 20 minutes of the film. I actually, so the, the poster shows Ben Stiller with some Christmas lights around him. So you think, oh, we got ourselves a Christmas vacation situation. There's going to be a bunch of Christmas chaos. Maybe a little bit too much eggnog getting taken down. Maybe uh, we get another cat wrapped in a box. No, 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 no. Christmas is out the window for this. That's, that's just some shitty marketing. There is eventually going to be a Nutcracker play performed, but this takes a backseat to everything else. That's just like the final little bullshit hurrah. Throw Christmas out of your mind. We're just going to watch this as a regular dramedy because that's what it is at the end of the day. And it's really not that dramatic and it's certainly not that comedy. Certainly not that funny. As I stated, some younglings lost their folks. And so now they need a new caregiver because they're all very young. I think the oldest one is 12, 13, something like that. They are the Kicklighter family, and they're actually all brothers in real life. They're the, the Jansen family. Yeah, they're all related. And for not acting before, I just watched some movies where kid actors were the primary in that terrible Dear Santa movie. These kids did a good job. I'll give credit where it's due. The acting in this is solid. The likability is not there because when we are introduced to these little shitheads, they're assholes to Michael, who is their uncle. Michael comes down from the big city in his Porsche. Early on, he puts down his laptop. He starts going to work, prattling away. They start throwing rocks at him. I'm like, oh, wow, that's not very playful. And then, oh, my God, they throw a baseball at his head. And no, it's not presented in a way of like a something about Mary, where Ben Stiller gets hit with something and does a really over-the-top comedic expression and it cuts to an even more insane situation. No, instead it's, Oh, oh God, that, oh, that hurt, oh. End scene. These kids are assholes and they continue to be such for a good chunk of the movie to a point where people will absolutely shut it off because who are we rooting for here? I was kind of hoping Michael would turn into Michael from Halloween and kill these little assholes. 
Alas, he did not. He went the safe route, the route that everyone knows where this is going to play before it even gets going. So he's the big guy from the city moving to the farm town, moving to the country where he's got no Wi-Fi. He's got no cell service. He just has to shut it off and deal with these troublemakers. And the caseworker has informed him, played by Linda Cardellini, that they had a family for these kids, but they're no longer available. And so now Stiller's got to spend the weekend with them, possibly till Monday or Tuesday, where he's got a deadline. And I'm guessing, based on have watched any movie ever, that he's going to fall in love with these children and eventually he will take control, adopting them, becoming the primary caregiver, kumbaya. Oh, it looks like he's got a little bit of sparks with Linda Cardellini. I wonder if they'll become a couple. I wonder. Yeah, of course they will. This is the most paint by numbers formulaic shit ever, which can be perfectly fine if done well. This isn't. Gordon Green has spent too much time in the horror space. I don't think he knows comedy if it hit him in the nuts. He's doing everything so dry. It's almost like an A24 quirky film, but it's not doing the quirky stuff. This isn't a Little Miss Sunshine situation either, which is a great comedy, by the way. That's more the dry comedy that I appreciate. This is just so dull and has no energy to it. And Ben Stiller, who I think is a great comedian, is so boring here. He's just phoning it in. It's like he'd rather be doing anything else than participating in this movie. I'm going to be honest with you. I made it an hour into this film and then I fast forwarded to a few scenes because I just wanted to see if I was right and knew that it was going to end exactly the way that it predictably would. And it did. And then I wanted to see if there was any nutcracker shit in it. And there kind of was. The comedy's bland. The cinematography's bland. Everything across the board. I don't think it's horrible. I think it's maybe kind of watchable for people. But again, there's just so many better examples of a movie like this. I already brought up Little Miss Sunshine as one of them. If you're looking for like a feel good family outing that's a little bit unconventional with quirky characters, the kids aren't quirky. They're just kind of shit. And there is a scene where they're trying to make some jokes where Michael has to teach them about the birds and the bees. And the one kid just keeps saying like boobies and penis and vagina. And, and these, these, this is the humor level that we're at now. Not presented in a over-the-top way, presented in a dry, colorless space. This is the third movie I watched out of the Christmas Chronicles collection. Paramount Plus had Dear Santa come out this week. Netflix had that stupid Lindsay Lohan thing, Our Little Secret, and Hulu gives us Nutcrackers. What a treat. What an experience all around for me. I did see Moana 2 with the kids a few days ago. Enjoyed that. That was a watchable, colorful, vibrant, very formulaic film. Get in and get out. We all had a good time with it. But uh, yeah, Nutcrackers, not worth watching. All right, you're not going to bust a nut over it. I'll tell you that much right now. Not going to happen, mister. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment. Please think of liking the video and subscribing, hitting that notification bell up top, short for notification. And then I will show up in your video feed somewhere. I don't know how the algorithm works these days or what the YouTube gods have announced is going to be the way moving forward. But as for now, notification bell and subscribing is paramount. Plus, if you love what I'm doing, become a patron at patreon.com slash Adam does movies. There's different tier levels. I opened a new merch store. You can probably find t-shirts under this video if you're on YouTube watching. And yeah, those are just great ways to support the channel and my, my mental health, which is quickly starting to deteriorate. All right. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.